Hey everyone, it's Jonathan from Leica with another video here on Cyclone 3DR. This video we're going to talk about using planes to check floor flatness. Now there are some fl flatness tools that I'll cover in another video here. But this is just kind of a method that I used to use with the extraction <clears throat> that you might still want to use in some cases whenever you need to have a very specific direction that you need to check flatness against or check a direction for. So the way that we go about doing this, um, I've just got a generic scan here some uh, construction with a concrete pour here. The first thing you do is you would extract the plane. So I've got my point cloud turned on and then on the extract tab I go here to extract the plane and then I want to use region grow. Now region grow is like the best fit. It's it best so best plane would actually take the whole point cloud and try to fit a plane to it. Region grow will give it seed points so I'll click region grow. You'll see here when I start clicking on some points that it looks around the area for it and then tries to generate a plane based off of that data that's around that surrounding point. Then we can uh, provide additional seed points. So we'll give a second point over there. You can see that grew my plane a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm trying to cover the whole floor. I'm going to give it one more over here to try to create the plane from. It's going to do as best it can. Um, well, that one made it a little bit worse. I'll give it another seed point over there. Um, so that's the way that the region grow command works. That kind of covers the whole thing for us. But one thing that I want to say about this is the way that we're doing this doesn't really provide us a good flatness analysis just because this plane is actually fit to the floor. So it is going to try to best match a flat surface to the entire floor, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is going to be level. So like let's say we were trying to check flatness and also our level, well you can see the normal direction um, might be slightly off. So I know that my x and y tilt is, is also slightly off here. So what we could do is we could control the normal of this plane. We can hit this little padlock over here that locks the normal and that allows us to manually set it. So I can either enter my values here, I can put 0, 0, 1 here that'll actually update this so that this plane is only allowed to be perfectly vertical based off of the coordinate system of our of our document. So you can see that it, it affected the way that it created the plane here. Another way we could do this is we click the arrow and then we could just click z-axis and that would set this the same way. We also have an extraction tolerance for our region grow. I'm going to go ahead and make that 10 millimeters. That helps us fit a better plane here. Yeah, so that's giving us a little bit more wiggle room. So, once we're happy with that, that seems to cover the entire floor there for us. I'll say OK exit on that. And this gives us our plane. And the important thing about this plane is that the uh, vector direction of it is perfectly vertical. So, The next thing that we can do is we can just use our regular analysis tools. Uh, in this case, though, I want to thin this out a little bit. So I'm going to take this plane. I'm going to use the clean tool. You separate according to distance. We'll use our filter object as our extract plane. And let's just cut this down to like six inches over the floor, maybe even less than that. Let's say three inches. Let's see what we get here. Good to me. Yeah, that cuts down a lot of the floor object for us. Might even go further. Let's go down to one inch. Yeah, there we're starting to lose a little, little bit of floor on the far end. Um, let me make this 1.5. Okay. We'll say okay there. So now we have a cloud object and a plane object that is uh, vertical on our uh, z-axis as far as levelness goes. And then we can go to the analysis tab and run a comparison. So here we can actually say compare cloud versus geometry. And if we're just checking our z values, our levelness values, we can actually force such a projection direction like I have selected here. And we'll do that in the z-axis. 
And we'll check on both sides. There shouldn't be much underneath of it. Um, and then our max distance, we'll just we'll make it a, I guess we do want to kind of constrain it here. So we'll say that's three inches. And that'll be it. And then we'll go ahead and preview it. You can see it did stick. You can see the pattern is, is very similar. Um, I'll say okay on this because I want to turn off our all of our other clouds here. So this is our flatness inspection. So we've got uh, a little bit of upward slope over here on this side uh, to make this a little bit easier to read. Let's grab this point cloud and then we'll edit the colors. And let's say. We use our tolerance preset here. And that's looking pretty good. So we've got our over and under. And that's, let's make this um, make this a centimeter. There we go. So that gives us an idea of where we have a little bit of over and a little bit of under. If we want to, we can add a couple more bands in here. Uh, let's add a Teal band and an orange band. Make this a little bit easier to read. And then let's say that this is going to be five millimeters. Negative five millimeters. You can see 3 dr is doing the conversion for me as I go, which is really nice. Uh, we'll make this 7.5 millimeter. That's a little bit too much. We'll make it where does this put us? Let's say two centimeters. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. And we'll do negative two centimeters. Yeah, so this gives us a little bit more of a breakdown as to actually where and how much of a deviation we have. So we're within two centimeters. In most of the areas, the only places where we have a little bit of bulge is we're over two centimeters here in the center of the floor, and then we're under two centimeters over on the far side as it sort of slopes down for drainage. But yeah, so that's just something I wanted to show, um, just to give an idea of how this uh, how this tool would work if you didn't use these surface levelness or flatness tools up here. If you have a, a localized slope, the same thing would work if you were using this data um, for a wall. You could do this as a, as a wall um, to check for bulge or, or any, any sort of bowing in a wall. And then if we turn on show quotations, that would just show us all of the uh, actual individual measurement data here. So hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.